Well, 40 years is just an amazing milestone for us. You know, we've been through a lot, um, whether it's economically, financially, uh, politically. Um, the, the UAE has grown so much and we've been right there along with it. We've seen the market grow. We've seen changing trends and uh, we've gone through ups and downs and we're really proud to be where we are today, where we are uh, currently the seventh ranked super yacht builder in the world. We're looking to become the fifth. We are, um, we're really proud of the team that we've built. Uh, the Gulfcraft family has worked really hard to be where we are and we're really excited about moving into the future and what that's gonna bring. Growth comes in basically two ways. You grow with your products and you grow with your market. So we're doing both. We're introducing new markets, we're constantly uh, launching new products, as well as opening uh, new regions around the world where we haven't been before, where we can strengthen uh, our sales more and our generally our presence. Well, here's the thing. Um, in 1982, there didn't really exist much of an infrastructure. Uh, this, you know, this region is not known for manufacturing. So therefore, there was a lot that had to be done in-house. And we continued to grow that way. We, we grew organically, but we were always vertically integrated and that made the, the most sense for our business. Today, what we're finding is that, and especially after COVID and the you know, logistics and supply chain issues, we're finding that um, we're taking on the responsibility of growing also suppliers in our region so that they also become certified, so they also level up so that they can provide us with some of the, um, shall we say, services or products on board, uh, especially when it comes to the manufacturing end. So we really are trying to give back into the UAE community and make sure that the business community grows with us. So we're not there standing on our own. We'd like to raise the UAE flag wherever we go. And we hope that that also encourages other businesses around us to also grow and, shall we say, level up. Well, firstly, I think you have to differentiate between Dubai and the UAE or Abu Dhabi because yes, the, the wealth came in with oil and gas, but Dubai itself, which is the most famous city in the UAE, doesn't actually have oil and gas. Dubai survived or grew, um, thrived from uh, Jabal Ali ports and tourism and hospitality, basically. So I think it's in, the, um, in our genes, basically, uh, luxury. And I don't think that it's just a story of oil and gas. I think there's a little bit more to it than that. You know, the gold trade, the uh, hospitality, the tourism, Jabalati, all of those types of things. And then on top of that, of course, we are looking into the future. The UAE is constantly future focused. And so we are looking at solar power, we are looking at alternative uh, uh, methods of propulsion, we're looking at all sorts of ways where we can have a more sustainable um, product as well as a uh, lower footprint when it comes to uh, the use of oil and gas. I think it's the accessibility of everything. You know, it's as much as it's built as this big luxury, you know, um, place, uh, it's incredibly family friendly. I'm a person with four children. I've always found that there's so much to see and do in Dubai for families, whether that's on the water or on land. Uh, there's so many great facilities for families and everything is sort of built around the, uh, the framework of, of families and I've really enjoyed that living in Dubai.